We are at uh, the Aquatic Center uh, here, the Sandra Stetson Aquatic Center here at Stetson University. And uh, this is our rain garden that's right behind us here. Um, so with our stormwater pond, uh, the outfall from the stormwater pond actually leads into this area right back here, the rain garden. Uh, we worked with the EPA, with the Florida DEP, and with Lucia County. Uh, that we had a 319 grant, and and so uh, using that grant money, uh, we actually planted out the rain garden in the back. Here. With this particular site, uh, the rain garden was always part of the concept, at least um, uh, from like the original design for for the Water Institute and for the Aquatic Center. Um, as uh, this facility was being built, uh, there weren't enough funds to actually complete the rain garden, but, but the design and really the bones were already there. And so when uh, we got the funding from the EPA to do this, it's kind of a demonstration project that, that we know that Volusia County, there's not a lot of green infrastructure in Volusia County right now. And so having projects that we can show and demonstrate, um, so, so we decided that this would, uh, this would be, of course, a great spot. So with the permitting, we worked with uh, the engineers who had actually designed uh, the construction uh, for the aquatic center itself. And so we have a stormwater permit uh, for the facility, um, but working through that, that this was fine within uh, the existing stormwater permit that we had. So just doing plantings, we didn't actually move any dirt, uh, so to say, of uh, kind of digging the hole deeper. We just, we planted plants. And when you're doing uh, that kind of activity, when you're planting plants, as long as you're not in violation of your permit, you don't have to get a new permit. So a rain garden, uh, what it does is it uses the native plants. It uses the functions of the native plants that we have uh, to essentially capture the nutrients uh, within the stormwater, uh, within the soils. Um, and, and the water, as it comes in, will infiltrate through and it'll go back into the groundwater. Um, and importantly for us as well, it actually, uh, there's habitat value. So rather than just having a mowed lawn, which is what this was before, um, that instead of it just being a lawn where you don't have birds really living there, uh, you don't have any butterflies living there, we have all these native plants that actually creates a habitat. We have an aquatic fern, we have some cypress trees, uh, we have a fakahatchee grass is along the side here. We have uh, some muley grass, we have pickerel weed, we have irises, um, we have some rushes, we have a whole wide diversity of plants that we put in. And uh, uh, the idea that we had is we put in a lot of different varieties of plants and we're kind of allowing it to self-organize. So the plants that do well are gonna spread. And, um, and that can be a concept for a lot of rain gardens is you put a lot of material in there and uh, you want to select things that are beautiful, that have nice flowers and that are going to be attractive, but are also hardy and that can spread. And so whichever thing, it's really kind of like Darwin, just really the strongest survive, natural selection, and that's, and that's the whole concept here. Uh, for this particular site, it's kind of hard to tell here, but there's a, there's a little bit of a depression. And so that was already existing as part of the site design. What we did is we just went and we killed the grass that was there. And then once we killed the grass, then we planted um, all of the native plants on top. Um, we did plant this originally back in April of last year, and it was really dry at that particular time. Um, I don't recommend doing that. I'd recommend doing it when it's a little wetter because we did have to irrigate this for about a month to get the plants established because it was so dry. Now that it's established, uh, really aside from a little bit of weeding here and there, there's, there, there's not much maintenance. You don't have to mow this, you don't have to irrigate it, just it's a, it'll survive in the flooding conditions when it's real wet, uh, uh, this turns into a pond. When it's real dry, it'll dry out and dry down and it can become pretty dry. But the aquatic plants um, are actually well designed and they have really strong root systems even when it dries out, they can really survive through that. The, the only big issue we had again was when we planted it when it was dry, that, that when the plants are first getting established, that was pretty tricky with having to irrigate it because again, it was hot, dry, April, May in Florida, not a good time to install a rain garden. Let me just go ahead and say that we learned that lesson. Um, but once it's gotten established, um, just the weeding is really uh, the main thing. And then for the first year, it's important to get in and get the weeds out, but once the plants get really established, 
uh, the native plants, if you have a thick cover and you plant it really densely, then they're gonna, once they're established, they can actually outcompete a lot of the weeds as well. Rain gardens uh, in particular, um, ours were going more in terms of ecological functionality um, and still with beauty, but I've seen examples of rain gardens that have been designed by landscape architects and they become real amenities within your community. And I've seen like yoga studios right next to rain gardens. And, and so they can become something that's a real attraction. And there's a lot of different kinds of rain gardens. And I can say landscape architects love uh, working with rain gardens. And so if you're looking for something to set your community apart, Having a strategic rain garden with beautiful flowers um, is really kind of a winning strategy. What we've seen with ours is the amount of bird life that comes in. So we get a lot of warblers will come in here. Uh, the sandhill cranes love this. Uh, we get wading birds. Uh, we get a lot of pollinators, a lot of butterflies come in. And so if you're interested in wildlife watching that, um, and then, uh, uh, the rain gardens are just perfect for that as well, and so they create little miniature habitats within the built environment.